Yes, Lord, change the step. Change the equal stride. Change the equal stride. Change the doing there. Change the doing there. We shall win. Let it be by the code. Let it be by the code. Make it on the hill high. Make it on the hill high. We shall lose. We shall lose. Stand by the road. Stand by the road. Cheers to winners go by. Cheers to winners go by. Day by day. Day by day. Get better and better. Get better and better. You can't be beat. You can't be beat. You won't be beat. You won't be beat. Be be oh. edition of the Hometown Hype, the Jay Beach Show. We're talking about the 20-14 to 14 victory over the Stone Tomcats, and uh, what a game. I mean, you, you know, it was one of those that you're sitting on the edge of your seat, and you just never know when it was going to turn, but thankfully there late in the second half it did. Yeah, that was a game, <clears throat> you know, I think our fans and our players and, and our coaching staff will always remember uh, one of those that just didn't have a good feeling the whole game. It was tough. We was battling, and you know, all of a sudden, our kids, uh, we broke through in the fourth quarter. It's a set testament to our kids, our kids' resiliency and courage and, and uh, fight and uh, never really lose faith uh, and just play as hard there at the very end as we did at the very beginning, and it, and it paid off. Absolutely, you did. 20-14 to 14 over Stone High School. We'll come back after this word from our sponsors. sitting in with our head coach Jay Beach on the Jay Beach Show powered by Hometown Hype. I'm Jason Baker and now we're breaking down the first half and you know the interesting part of it is is we start off and, and we go down the field on what is maybe one of the more epic drives of the season. Uh, I think 19, 20 plays, 10, 32 off the clock. It started with about nine and a half minutes to go in the first quarter and you wind up not scoring uh, until about uh, 11 minutes, I think, in the second quarter on a Tyson Holston uh, sweep, if you will, and just take us through the drive. I mean, it, it, it was kind of the tone setter of the game, I felt like. Yeah, that was probably one of the toughest 90 yard drives you'll ever see. Uh, yeah, every every ounce, every uh, every yard was just tough to get, and that's a credit to how Stone played, and Stone's players and coaches prepared for the game, and uh, it also shows uh, some resiliency and some, uh, you know, Courage and hard on our part that uh, you know it, we can go 22 plays without a major mistake to end the drive. So yeah, that was, that was crucial for us as you as you see at the end with the result being a close game. We needed that score. The Stone rivalry is an intense rivalry, and and I wanted to touch on one thing: the opening kickoff. It was 
the tone of that game to me was set. Peyton Graham comes down and absolutely just does what Peyton Graham does on that kickoff team. He kind of slips around on that second wave of individuals and bam, I mean, he hits the guy just in a textbook form tackle. And that just set kind of the tone for the rest of the game, I felt like. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of the epitome of how the game played out. Just a, a hard hitting physical contest with two teams that uh, don't like each other very much. And, uh, and it was just a hard hitting physical old time old school football game when we go into the second quarter that's kind of when they began to get their momentum going um you know they get the long kickoff return from the Whaley kid and, and he's a dynamite player uh in his own right and then they score quickly and and from there it felt like they kind of grabbed momentum and, and like you said in the opening segment you kind of knew that everything we were going to have to get friday night was going to have to be earned mm -hmm. yeah well there that kickoff uh I, you know, that led to their, their their first touchdown. I think they only had to go six yards to get in. Um, and then they back it up with two, a couple stops in a row, and they uh, pitch an option out, and we missed a couple tackles. We had them in the backfield and missed tackles uh, to set up their second score. So, yeah, they, they definitely had the momentum going into halftime. When you look at it, Right before the half, I felt like one of the things where it began to turn a little bit, maybe where you just felt like, okay, we're going to go in here regroup. I thought Kanan's big kickoff return was kind of a, 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 a tone setter, if you will, heading into the locker room. We didn't do anything with it, mm -hmm. but it just kind of gave us that life that, look, you know, we got to just get back in here and kind of get our game plan back together and come back out in the second half. Was that true? I mean, yeah, that's true. It, you know, it kind of let, you know, everybody know on the sideline, although things aren't going very well, we're one play away from being back in it and we almost got back in it right there so uh, we, we knew we were just one play away if the defense would play strong which they absolutely did in the second second half that we were one play away uh, from tying it up. Other than the picking ball game you haven't been down at the half that's not been the case so far through now four games but the picking game and obviously the stone game you go into a, a locker room that where you're down what was the mood like inside the locker room as you, as you went into the half? Uh, it was it was kind of awkward, kind of strange, uh, in the fact that we had some kids. Uh, we were all excited, uh, but we had some kids just really uh, a little upset. Uh, saw some kids crying, and not because uh, they didn't want to get back out there, just because it was so important to them, and they couldn't wait to get back out. And they were they were huddled up, motivating each other. Uh, and listening to their coaches, trying to do everything they could, and um, you know they were, you know, bonding together and promising each other, and promising the coach and staff that they were going to fight tooth and nail to the end. And we're going to see what happens. How excited does that get you as a coach when you come into a locker room like that and you get an opportunity to see a scene like that? You know that that it means that much to to this team, and and I, it, I can't help but attribute some of that to the success that we've had over the last two seasons. It's just kind of breeding that taste to where losing getting a whole lot of fun and even being down isn't that much fun. Yeah, it's very important to them and uh, they don't want to disappoint. Uh, you know, we know we got a big following and uh, we don't want to disappoint our, our crowd. We don't want to disappoint. They don't want to disappoint us as a coaching staff and, and we definitely don't want to disappoint our players. So it was a team effort. Coaches, uh, players got together and we, we made some adjustments and went out and just had to grind out a very, very tough second half. Absolutely. 14-6 was the halftime score. We're going to take a moment and sit down with our senior profile, Kobe Taylor, sponsored by Morris Insurance Agency. And when we come back, we'll talk about the exciting second half between Poplar Phil and the Stone Hot Tomcats on the JB Show, powered by Hometown Hike. We're here with Kobe Taylor. This is his senior profile, and we're here with his dad, too, Mr. Rodney. And, Kobe, I'm going to talk to you about tonight, man, because tonight we just beat Stone, and that was an awesome game to be a part of. Tell me about tonight. Feels great. I love all the guys that's out here with me. They're my brothers. And we just fought hard in that second half when we came out and won. Absolutely, man. And let's talk about you a little bit. Tell me what you – what do you like other than football, man? I, I like every sport. I like to play basketball. I like to watch it. I like – any sport that you can name. There you go. So you're just a sports kind of guy, huh? Yeah. 
Well, Mr. Rodney, I'm gonna ask you, you know, I mean, it's really awesome to sit here and watch these Hornets play on Friday nights, but what's it like to watch a senior, your son, play out here on Friday night? This is one of the best feelings as a father, to watch his son play on Friday night and just cheer these Hornets on. I'm, I'm a Papa Bill graduate and I'm proud to be here and I'm excited these guys came through and showed hard tonight and got the win. Absolutely. It was such an awesome game to be a part of tonight, such an awesome team to be a part of. And Kobe, congratulations on tonight, man. Thank you for talking with me. Welcome back, everybody, to Hometown Hype, the Jay Beach Show. I'm Jason Baker sitting down with our head coach, Jay Beach. And you go into the locker room 14 6 at the half. You come out in the third quarter, and I mean, it, it is truly a defensive ball game. If, if, if you like defense and you like hitting, then the third quarter was for you. Uh, and, and it mimicked you're a defensive guy. Uh, their head coach, John Feaster, was a great defensive player in his own right. To me, it was two teams kind of mimic each other in style of play, and I just thought in that third quarter, the defenses begin to shine, and especially our Hornet defense. I thought they they came out and set the tone in the second half that they were going to be a force in this in this second half to deal with. What was your thoughts? Yeah, the third quarter was just kind of, a, uh, you know, an exchange of punts. Both teams, I believe, just exchanged punts the whole third quarter. Uh, and I think both coaches realized how well the defense was playing and uh, was going to try to try to rely on the defense to win it. Uh, they had the advantage that they had a lead already, and so uh, they didn't want to take any chances, any big time chances, I don't think, and lose the game. We we were playing somewhat conservative as well as we knew our, our defense was going to play good. Uh, but at some point, we had to make up 14 points, and uh, that's what we were do, able to do that in the fourth quarter. When you look at Tyson, he played a role as the punt returner. Uh, I can remember late in the third quarter, I believe, we hold him. They punt the football, and it was obvious he was going to be crowded. You know, their punt coverage I thought was great. I thought ours was excellent as well uh, Friday night. But Tyson, that was a big opportunity for them to be able to kind of flip field position, but him going underneath it, getting the fair catch, making the making the punt return, yeah. if you will, that was big. Yeah, well, every time you get a kid that can fair catch one of those high punts and, and a lot of traffic, and it saved you about 20 yards on average field position once you account for the bounce. So, yeah, th those fair catches were huge, and he caught a, a bunch of them in a lot of traffic, some high kicks, some tough-to-handle kicks. He probably saved us 100 yards of field position once you average it all out. So you get through the third quarter, it's 14-6, and then we head to the fourth quarter, and that's where I guess the fireworks for us begin. Um, but not before Stone kind of had a few tricks up their sleeve. I know they had a fake punt that was a big conversion for them. I don't know if it was by design. They low snapped it all night, it seemed like, uh, to Whaley. But uh, that was a big play, um, at least for them to maintain momentum. But I felt like each time we got a defensive stop, it was just one more tick in our corner yeah. to where you just kind of felt like maybe that momentum was starting to get on our side, even though offensively it hadn't really crunked up yet. Yeah, well, that, our defense gave us a lot of chances in the second half. If our defense would have uh, uh, quit playing quite as hard and allowed a couple more first downs here and there, uh, that would have reduced our opportunities, our possessions. So and we needed every one we could get. And our last two possessions were, were the ones that we scored on. And in the fourth quarter, we didn't score until six minutes left. So uh, about half, it took us about half the fourth quarter to ever get going as well. So, What's that like offensively? Um, I didn't sense a lot of frustration from you guys in my role on the sideline. I felt like, you know, but you're a calm guy, and I feel like most of your staff kind of has a, mm -hmm. a presence about them that they don't really get too animated or, or too yeah. down. But at a certain point, it had to become frustrating. Yeah, we were frustrated. We, we, we were close, I felt, to breaking a few, and it was frustrating, but it, it's not gonna do you any good to act frustrated about it. Uh, just gotta keep searching, keep, keep blocking, and hopefully you can wear, wear them down. And, uh, or, and we were able to go to a play that we didn't think was gonna be successful for us. We hadn't even practiced it all week, in fact, and uh, went to the, the tackle trap and it proved to be uh, effective for us twice. When it started turning, uh, I, you know, I couldn't really tell, because I'm not the X's and O's guys that you guys are, I couldn't tell exactly what it was you went to, mm -hmm. but take us through it. I, I noticed it began where I felt like early in the game, Roosevelt was the guy that had a lot more space to work with. Um, and then as the game went on, to me, they seemed to kind of hone in on Tyson and Roosevelt. And it's not that they forgot about Austin, but I just kind of felt like it, it gave Austin just that crease that 
he began to kind of find himself in space. Mm -hmm. Take us through the thought process of how you got to that change in that in that play and, and, and what allowed it to be so successful. Yeah, well, we felt like we kind of saw their linebackers flowing laterally more than, than plugging gaps. And uh, we felt the, uh, the counter play, which is a mummy motion, and then come back the opposite way and uh, got the, their linebackers out of position, and, uh, gave us a little crease, just a little crease. And that was uh, all Austin needed. When you look at him, he's special. Austin Bolton is uh, one of a kind. And, and several times through the night, I can remember watching him come off the field. And, you know, he kept saying, I'm close. You know, I'm close. And his teammates could, I almost yeah. felt like they could feel it. Yeah. Uh, when he got that burst, when he made that, I think it was 56 yards is what he scampered mm -hmm. for. That had, to, that had to be the point at the end that you almost had a kind of a, a let go and just a, a deep breath and just know that everything's going to be all right. Take us through that Austin run. Yeah, we he, uh, brought a 56-yard run, and that, that seemed like it just lit a little match under us, and we uh, got our confidence back, and, and we started just uh, going to work there through a pass and scored the next, you know, in three plays after that. That's right. Let's go to the game-winning drive. Let's go to the one that puts us up. I thought, and, and honestly, it was one of the things that in calling the game on the radio, you, you pay attention to certain things, but Tyler Mata had a block on that 36-yard run that I don't want to miss because it stood out to me. And I thought Tyler played one of his better games against one of the tougher defenses maybe he'll see all year. Take us through the 36-yard scamper that, that sent the crowd and the – pandemonium, if you will, and then our sideline as well, yeah. and uh, put us on top for good. Yeah, we knew we wanted to come back to the play. We didn't want to come back to it too quick. We wanted to kind of save it for, for the right moment. And uh, we were able to get two first downs, I believe, two first downs in that drive before we come back to it. And uh, it's, it's a tackle trap play where our tackle actually traps instead of our guard. And he actually overran the guy he's supposed to trap. Uh, he didn't block the right guy necessarily. Uh, but the guy he was supposed to block uh, squeezed down so hard that we ra ran over the top of him and he kicked out the next one and uh, it worked great. It sprung <laughs> Austin. Yeah. And when you look at it, I want to go back to the defensive side of the ball for a moment. A couple of guys that I want to highlight. Ross Barnett, he had the big interception in the first half when really they were driving deep in our territory. And then he had the pressure on some of the plays that ended the game uh, on their quarterback. And they were a tough they were a tough task for a linebacker because they had some guys in that backfield that had some patience. I know when they switched to McCray at quarterback, he showed a lot of patience and that's tough for a linebacker because yeah. you're so aggressive. What did you think of Ross's play? Well, I thought Ross played excellent. I mean, and he also had the pitch man on option. That's pretty tough in itself. You know, you're out there in the wide open, just you and one of their that's talented right. running backs. And, uh, you got to make the play, which, uh, he got out there, he was in position, and then we had our flow, our, our effort and our flow got there and helped, helped him make the play on those option pitches. But uh, there, I don't know of anybody on our defense that probably didn't play their, one of their best games they've ever played. What about Tyson on the final play on the interception? I, I saw y'all kind of get on Tyson to play before. Yeah. Um, I think he might have went the wrong way on, on a pickup receiver. And then he comes back, and, and just like in Tyson Holston mode, I mean, he creates, creates or corrects his mistake, if you will, and makes the final interception there to seal the deal. Yeah, well, Tyson played great defensively on Mike Long. Uh, he, he read his keys well. He didn't get fooled on play action passes. And when it, when it was a run, he got down there and, and, and got his nose dirty and down there in the line of scrimmage. One of the guys to highlight as well, he's actually our Herring Ford player of the week is uh, defensive end Luke Mitchell. Take us through Luke's game and, and your thoughts and, and how we got to this player of the week selection. Well, he just played uh, great fundamental, great technique out of defensive end. I had to play physical, I had to take on wing backs, blocking down on him, had to take on double teams. Uh, the reverse seemed to always come back to his direction and he was always in position uh, to make a play on that. And uh, it was just a tough game for a defensive end and, and he played really, really, really well. Absolutely. But, like I said earlier, that player of the game was such a hard decision this week. Um, you know, we had five, six, seven guys. We, we, we were all nominated that it could have been. It could have been any, any one of those guys. And so this week was really, really tough to Absolutely. choose player of the week. All right. Luke Mitchell, our defensive end, is our Herring Ford.
Player of the Week, Mackenzie Harris. We'll sit down with him right now to talk a little bit about the ball game versus Stone. Welcome to this segment of Hometown Hype. I'm sitting down with Luke Mitchell, our Player of the Week. And Luke, congratulations on being named Player of the Week. That was such a big game to have that kind of title, man. Tell me how that feels. Feels pretty good knowing that a lot of guys play their best game tonight, and uh, I was named Player of the Game. Yeah, that's really awesome. That was an awesome game to get Player of the Week from. And uh, let's go ahead and start talking about it. You know, leading up to the game, tell me kind of how you felt because I talked to Coach Beach like the night before, and he was like, man, I'm nervous. And uh, tell me how it was as a player coming into that game. Uh, we knew uh, Stone was a very good team, and knew they were really athletic, going to give us a dog fight, and uh, just had to tough it out. It definitely was a dog fight from start to finish, it seemed like. And you played on the defensive side, you're the defensive end. Uh, tell me how it was actually playing in the game. I mean, they talked about how fast those guys were. Like, what did you feel like? We just had to uh, revert back to our training, our uh, coaches preach technique. You play that well. The job gets done. Yeah, and you, like you said, they preach technique. Um, we've heard that a lot from them. Tell me about you as a player coming into this program, coming in um, ninth grade, tenth grade. You know, was there any kind? Of, did you have to change the way that you played football at all? <laughs> yeah, uh, when I was younger, I just I didn't do nothing about football really, and doing uh, just going over and over and doing what they teach you. You know. Just gets you better and better. Yeah, like what they you really bought into what they were yeah. saying and what they were teaching. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so tell us about um, the game. You know, uh, at halftime, what was it like during that halftime? We talked to Coach Beach, you know, and he said that it was kind of a little bit. You know, some kids were hyped up, some kids were kind of a little bit down. Uh, but then that second half, y'all came out and y'all just like killed it in the second half. At halftime, I really wasn't down. I was just like, if everybody keeps doing their job, the coaches said if we kept doing our job. Keep playing hard. Things will start to turn around, and they did. Thankfully. Yeah. yeah, they definitely turned around, and everybody started just like playing like crazy. And you know, with the with the offense kind of having a little bit of a tr trouble getting some things going, what did that feel like on the defensive side? Did that just make y'all want to play even harder? Yeah, I mean, we knew if we kept our offense off the field, we had a, a really good chance of winning. Keep ours back. Keep keep ours on the field. Yeah. And we knew that our offense would get the job done eventually. Yeah, so y'all had faith in that offense to come back and bring it in. And uh, tell me about your coaches as well. We see Coach Rocky just come up and, <laughs> and bear hug you and be like, man, you know, he was just so proud of you in that game. And everybody kind of, you know, the we see everybody playing really good in these games that we've played so far, but this game it seemed like everybody just had to bring it to a new level. Tell us about the coaches and that new level that you had to bring. We spend, uh, we spend a lot of time with those coaches, so we're, we're really close with them. And uh, we just knew we had to be really intense and play hard when we get the job done. Yep. Well, Y'all definitely got the job done. Y'all beat Stone. That was such a big game. And congratulations, Luke, again on being named Player of the Week. And thank you for coming in and talking with us. Thank you.
getting our starting nose guard for the Poplarville Hornets. And Ahmad, you had a game tonight. And I mean, the whole Poplarville Hornet team had a game, but you had a really good game tonight. Tell me about how it felt, you know, going up against these guys and just really knocking it out. Well, Coach B said before we went out at half, well, before we went out and started the game, he said if we went down by uh, six points, it put us to a test, and that's what happened tonight. And we went in at halftime with our heads down, but I picked the whole team up. We came out with our – we used to dog fights like pick you, and we, we used to that. We, we practice four days a week. We ready for it. That's why we work out on Thursday mornings. Well – Oh. That's what you live for, man. That's what this. That's what the, you work hard for every day. That's what these games, these games like this, is what it's all about, huh? And tell me, I mean, I saw you on the, over there after big plays. You would just be like rallying those guys up. Tell me about keeping that intensity up this entire game. Well, if you come out like that in the first half, you got to come out harder than what you did. They thought they they won the game, but we we ain't letting nobody come out here and take it. We come down here just for a business trip, and uh. You got to keep your same intensity all game. You got to bring it every down, every play. Absolutely. And y'all brought it, man. Y'all brought it every down, every play, and y'all stood up to him, man. Congratulations on tonight. Thank you. Hey, everybody, I'm here with Caden Wheaton. Caden, you just came back from a big injury. You know, you've been out for the past couple of games. It's your first game back. Tell me how it was coming out and playing tonight. Uh, it was definitely exciting, you know, sitting on the sidelines, watching my team play and not getting to play, and then coming to a big game like this. and. One of our players ended up getting injured, and I had to actually switch sides and uh, play a whole new, different thing. And it was definitely difficult. And coming back from injury, you know, it was different. And it's good to be back. Absolutely. And tell me about tonight's game. I mean, it was back and forth. You know, things were just kind of going sideways for us one minute, and then going our way one minute. Tell us about tonight's game. They were they were definitely a good team. You know, well taught, and they played really, really hard. Their O line, you know, they was really good. They had some pretty decent good-sized players up there, and they they played their heart out. You know, they did good, but we just overtook them and played a little bit harder than they did. Overcame it? For yes, sir, yeah. Absolutely, and that's what our Hornets do. We give it yeah. we give it all we have every single time. Well, Caden, congratulations on your first game back and doing so good, man. Thank you for talking with me. All right, appreciate it. Hey, everybody, I'm here with Austin Bolton. And, Austin, man, you had a great game tonight. It kind of started off a little bit slow, but we got it rolling in that second half. Tell me about the fight of this team and tonight's game. Well, we knew it was going to be a dog fight all week. We just uh, get a credit to my old line. They fought real hard, man. And the defense came up with a big stop to give us the ball back, and we drove down there. 42 kind of had busted for me then. So we had scored again, ran the same play and scored. So you had the touchdown tonight, man. You had that last touchdown. Tell me about how that felt to run that down there and know that that was pretty much the solid that we got this game under control now. Man, it feels great, man. Good guy, all the glory, man. He did this for us. Absolutely. And tell us a little bit about, um, you know, was it hard coming out here? The, the Stone County team, they were pretty good coming out here in this first half. They kind of got us a little bit down. Tell us how it was running against that defense that they had. Man, they, they defense uh great, man. We knew it was going to be a dolph. Like I said, had to go all four quarters to win this game, man. I, uh, they real great. Absolutely. Well, you did an awesome job running against them, man. You got your big runs like you normally do, and congratulations on tonight, man. Appreciate it. I'm here with Ross Barnett, our linebacker for the Pop the Real Hornets. And Ross, man, you had another great game tonight. This was a fun night to be a part of. Tell me about tonight's game. What were y'all thinking coming into tonight? Well, you know, we came here, started a little bit slow. Just, I'm, uh, you know, we went in the half, just home about, you know, if we came back 100%, we, was, we, was, we had a chance. And, hey, y'all heard me last or a couple weeks ago about the hypothesis. Hey, we had it right. Yeah, we had I said, uh, you know, we just came back and played our football. Just everybody started off slow. We as a team, you know, no individuals. And we went halftime, you know, everybody was talking. Hey, we come back, our best against their best. We beat them, man. Hey, we came back and played. Everybody stepped it up. Absolutely. And you had some really big tackles, big plays, big interception that kind of really turned the tide around. Tell me how it was playing on that defense. I saw you over there trying to get the crowd pumping up. Tell me about keeping that intensity and that defensive side, man. Well, you know, they're in the first couple of drives, they kind of got a wave on us. You know, they was uh, really hurting us there, driving it down the field. And you just had to keep playing. And that's just where all the summer workouts and heart, heart and hard work comes in. You just got to keep playing. And, you know, when you get a break, you know, not – uh, singling myself out, but when you know somebody makes an interception or somebody like that or a big hit, uh, it just we get the momentum, and when you get the momentum, you just gotta do what you know the best, and just you just gotta keep the momentum going, and great things gonna happen. I don't, I don't thank God for everything. Uh, thank Mr. Billy Kent every uh, Thursday we do a devotion, and I just want to thank him and everybody else a part of the Popperville Hornet uh, football program.
Great job, Rawson. Great, great things happened tonight. It was a great game tonight. Congratulations on keeping that momentum alive and having those big plays, man. Thank you. I'm here with Peyton Graham, our other linebacker for the Popperville Hornets. And Peyton, tell me about tonight's game, man. This was an awesome game to be a part of. It was just a great atmosphere with the fans and everyone pumped up, all the players. We came out, I think the first quarter we did good, and the sec second quarter we came out pretty slow. But the fourth quarter, definitely, we, we came back. And it just helped the fans pretty much help us pump up and all that stuff. Absolutely. As a team leader, team captain of tonight's game, tell me how it was kind of keeping these guys going. And like you said, it was hard in that first half, but y'all really came out and stood it up on that second half. Well, we were down at halftime. We, we didn't go in the locker room. We didn't mope around. Everybody pumped up. Like, we're not done. That's not, that's not what we're about. So we came out here and showed up what we're really about. Absolutely. You had some hard hits tonight. Tell me about those hard hits going up against that Stone County offense. Man, that ain't nothing. That's what I do every week. Absolutely. But I wouldn't be able to do it without everybody else here. Absolutely. A great teamwork, great effort tonight, man. Congratulations on a huge win tonight. Appreciate it. Hey, everybody, I'm here with Kyle Chambliss. And, Kyle, it was a big game tonight, big win for the Popperville Hornets. Tell me about tonight's game, man. I mean, we started off real slow, but, I mean, after halftime we just went to the locker rooms, talked about it, and got all of our adjustments right, and then just found out a way to stop their offense. And we, they did this one option that we've never seen before, and we didn't go over it that much at all. I mean, we just came out and did what we had to do to get back into the game. Was there anything different tonight for you specifically than there has been in the past few games? Yeah, we, I had to play over the nose guard this game because we were trying to stop, since they run the eye formation and everything, we are trying to stop all the powers, everything that they got, every sweep. I was able to fit in gaps and get to where I was going and clog it up. I got you, man. Well, tell me a little bit about on the coaching side. You know, I mean, we're down uh, going into the second half. Tell me, what were those coaches telling y'all on the defensive side? What were they really stressing to y'all coming into that second half? We just got to, like, really get going. We couldn't come out here slouching. We couldn't think that we didn't have a chance in the game. We just had to come out and do what we've been doing all year, just come out and dominate. Absolutely, and y'all came out and y'all showed them up. Hey, everybody, up. I'm here with Coach Rocky Hester, and he's our defensive line coach. And Coach Rocky – Man, your defense stood it up tonight. Tell me about how that was coaching these guys throughout this game. Uh, it was it was absolutely amazing. They uh, they did their job. They played technique. We got on to them this week about just playing our technique, doing their job, and and they really came through. We we just amazing. I don't know what else to say. It was just truly a great experience to, to be a part of. I'm honored and, and humbled to be a part of this 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 team this year. Tell me about uh, you know those defensive ends that you were, you specifically have coaching on. Uh, Mario Barnes, he was having a game tonight. We just saw it happen. I mean, everybody was really, really playing hard. Tell me about this game, you know, those certain kind of players, those defensive ends. Well, big games, big players step up. They really do. They they came they came to play tonight. They knew we our offense would get it in. And we just had to be patient. We did what we did, and the offense came around. Defense played their technique, and we went down with a win. It was very exciting to watch that defense. They just kept coming, and especially in the second half. Was there anything after halftime that really got that defense really riled up to play that second half? No, not really. We we always had faith in ourselves. We always knew we could do it. Mario and Luke stepped up tonight. They they played outstanding ball. Devin Hart came in for a couple series to give Mario a little breather. Did a great job. They 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 held their ground. They played their technique, and they went down. I mean, they 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 did their job tonight. Awesome game tonight, Coach. Awesome coaching on your side. It was awesome to watch. So much fun to watch, and I know it was fun to coach too. Thank you so much Absolutely. for talking with me, Coach. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody, to the Jay Beat Show, powered by Hometown Hype. And now we look ahead. You're 4-0. This is the final non-conference game of the season. It is a road game. We're going to go on and take on the Heidelberg Oilers uh, at their place. And uh, I first want to get your thoughts on the 4-0 star. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a testament to your team. Three 5A programs on your non-conference slate. You go 3-0 against them. Um, how pleased are you through four games at what your team has accomplished? Yeah. Well, I'm pleased at our effort. I'm pleased that we've been down twice, two of those games at half, and we're able to come out and play a great second half. And uh, we were able to uh, be ahead at half by a uh, fairly large margin in two of the games. And we didn't come out, and we came out and played a great second half in those games as well. So we played really well this year in all, in all four of our games. Uh, very proud of our kids. I think we got a tough group of kids. 
they've made us very proud so far, and I can't wait to see what we can do. Before we get before we get to Heidelberg, there were two guys I wanted to highlight. Two of your coaching staff members, Tim Story and Adam Johnson, mm -hmm. along with Chris DeWeese as well. Yeah. That defensive staff, yeah. uh, I thought Friday night, man, I don't know that they could have topped their picking mm -hmm. performance until we watched Friday night's performance against Stone. Yeah. What's that defensive staff yeah. like? Well, don't forget Coach Hester. Coach Hester okay. does our defensive ends, and, and they've, they've played outstanding as well. And our whole, our whole defensive coaching staff has done a great job getting our kids ready. Uh, well, we know the, the guys – they got a simple scheme, uh, not a whole lot of uh, calls, schematic calls, you know, it's just technique. They get there and they play their sound fundamental technique and, and they, they train them up very well and uh, it's working out good for us. Let's turn our attention to Heidelberg. I, I don't know how much you know about them, but uh, you played them a few years back. Um, in, in kind of a game that, that, from what I understand, kind of went back and forth for a little bit, and we finally kind of just gained control. We had several injuries at that time in that game. Mm -hmm. What do you know about them this year as, as we get ready to head on the road next Friday? I know they're a very dangerous team. They're 3-1 and one right now. Their only loss was a three-point loss to a 3-8 three, three team, a very good 3-8 team in Southeast, La Southeast Lauderdale. Uh, we've, had, we've played them in the past, not too long ago, in 2014. The year we were at 10 and 3, uh, they were up 14 to nothing on us, and we scored with 18 seconds left in the game to finally put it away. So uh, it's a tough place to play, a tough environment, and they got loads of athletes. They made it to the third round last year and got put up by Bassfield. Uh, so they're a good football team. When you look at them, they're your last test before district mm -hmm. play. Do you hope that maybe your guys will still garner the attention to them? Let's not worry about a bye week. Let's not worry about what's coming down the road in district play. Yeah. Let's let's wrap this non-conference play up undefeated. Is that your hope? Yeah, that's our hope. And this is a good game, a good test for us. It's a different style. You know, we play Picayune, PRC, Seminary, and Stone all, for the most part, under center, uh, with playing with a tight end. Uh, and Heidelberg's in the shotgun, three, three to four wide receivers, and they're, they're slinging it, and they don't have a tight end, so this will be something that we need uh, to play against. And, uh, they're really going to test us. It's going to be a great test, Coach. We appreciate your time, as always, uh, sitting in with us. Congratulations on the 4-0 start. We look forward to talking to you next week. Okay, thank you. That is Head Coach Jay Beach. I'm Jason Baker. We thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Jay Beach Show, powered by Hometown Hype. We now hope you enjoy these images from our fan cam sponsored by Play It Again Sports of Hattiesburg.